Before we start the first encounter, I'm gonna assign you guys some loadouts. A pulse rifle or scout rifle, however I recommend Outbreak Perfected. A shotgun, fusion rifle or the recluse SMG. And an LMG or grenade launcher. And for your super loadouts, have the hunters run Golden Gun with Celestial Nighthawk or Orpheus Rigged Heather. Have the warlocks run Well of Radiance. And have the titans run Hammers. To start the first encounter, have three people from your fire team stand in this green circle. Three of them will be given a buff called Witch's Blessing. Those who do not have the buff will be able to damage enemies without a white outline, but not those with it, and the same applies to those with the buff. Now split your team into three groups of two, with each group consisting of one Witch's buff and one normal buff. Now position each team on the left, right, and center of the room. All you're really doing here is wave clearing, however, you you'll need to make sure that the enemies that are immune are killed by the right person. Now after a little while during each wave you should hear a witch's scream indicating that three crystals have spawned around the room, one for each team. These crystals can only be destroyed when shot by a player with and without the buff at the exact same time. There will be one on the left, middle and right side of the room. Make sure they're destroyed fast or your team will wipe. Also be sure to not let the buff holder die or they will lose the buff and somebody else with a buff will have to help out killing the crystal. Now, as easy as all of this is, there is a catch. If the Witch's Blessing buff runs out, those who are holding it will die. To avoid this happening, you will need to switch the buff out to the players who do not have it, essentially reversing the roles. To do this, simply have all six of you head to the front middle of the arena at around 10 seconds left and shoot this ball at the same time. This will give the buff to those who do not have it and take it away from those who do. From here, you will repeat the mechanics of the encounter until complete. The only thing that will change after the first switch is that there will be stronger enemies like ogres and witches along with a few more extra adds. And to make things easier for you, if there ever comes a point where the room stays empty for a little while and there is an opportunity to switch, go ahead and take it to give yourself more time during that wave. Once you are done, you can go ahead and retrieve your chest and then move on to the next encounter. Now, in order to get to the next encounter, your team will need to get past a jumping puzzle. There are a few stick around mechanics for this part, such as the purple vessels you will need to use to switch and use as a checkpoint system, and also the crystals return. However, this time there will be crystals with a bubble around them. These crystals cannot be shot from afar and must have the two players standing inside of the bubble in order to destroy them. As always, you'll need one non-buffed and one buffed to destroy these crystals. So once you and your team are ready, you can have three people stand inside of the green circle. Now, there's many methods you can use to make this easier, such as having three teams of two, with each team consisting of a buffed and non-buffed, and that seems to be the best idea. I'd also recommend having each team of two take a direction being left, middle, and right in order to make sure all crystals are hit fast enough. If you take too long, the pillars will fall and you'll start back from the last checkpoint vessel. Also, with everyone jumping around, it can get pretty crowded, so I'd recommend recommend having the middle team stay back at the vessel, letting the left and right teams go ahead. The middle team can instead help out shooting the non-bubble crystals from afar. Also, be sure to hit the purple vessels as you go along in order to give your team a checkpoint. You don't need all six of you inside, just as long as you have one buffed and one non-buffed player inside, you can hit it. However, my biggest and most important piece of advice to give you guys for this encounter is to communicate. So once you make it to the end, you can once again grab your chest and head into the next encounter. Now before we get into phase 1 of the boss fight, I'm going to give you guys some loadouts. If possible, have all 6 of you run Outbreak Perfected, but if you can't, any primary of your choice works too. Run either a shotgun, fusion rifle, or if possible the recluse SMG. And finally, a grenade launcher, or like I did, you can also run an LMG. It can also be pretty handy having one person on tractor cannon, but it's definitely not needed. However, in the event that you do have someone on tractor cannon, try and base all of your loadouts around void damage. And for our super loadouts, have the hunters on Orpheus Rig Tether or Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun, have the warlocks on Well of Radiance with Lunar Faction Boots if possible, and have the titans on hammers. 
The room you will find yourself in is split up into three sections. Dogs, Void and Stairs. Split your group up into three teams of two just as you have done throughout the raid so far. One starting with the buff and one without. Before starting the encounter make sure all teams are on the correct sides because once the encounter starts the arena will seal shut in between. There is vessels connecting each section together which will need to be activated in order to open up the arena. Now to start the encounter have somebody melee the deception of Galran. Once the encounter starts, the green circle will appear in one of the three sections. Have the designated buff holder from that side pick it up and have everyone begin killing adds. Just like the first encounter, there will be some enemies immune to you and some immune to your teammates, so work together on taking them down. Also be aware that on one of these sides, the deception will be chasing you around. Make sure to stay clear of him because if he hits you, it will most likely result in you dying. Now after some time, Ogres will spawn and once killed the vessels will spawn on the clockwise wall. Whoever has the buff will need to stand inside of it with their teammate and pass it to one of the players on the other side through the wall. You always transfer the buff clockwise meaning if dog starts with the buff they will transfer it at the void wall and then void will transfer it to the stairs wall on their side and if it starts on void they will transfer to stairs and so on. However it's important to remember that you cannot switch the buffs without killing the ogres that spawn. So keep an eye out for them and kill them as quickly as possible or else you will not be able to switch the buffs and open up the arena. Once the first wall is opened up you will need to repeat the mechanics until you need to switch again however this time all six people must stand inside of the vessel to switch the buffs. This is extremely important. Also remember that before switching all of the ogres need to be killed. This is essential. Once you switch again the arena will open up. Have one buffed player melee the deception followed by a non-buffed player meleeing it straight after. Just make sure that anybody who is not stunning him stands away from him while he is being stunned or it may remove their buffs as well. However, once stunned, you can now begin your damage phase. This is where the Warlock should place down their Well of Radiance and if you have it, track to cannon the boss. After some time, the Deception Shield will go back up and you will need to stun him again just as you did before. And if all has gone to plan beforehand, your team should have three buffed players allowing for three stuns. If you don't kill him in one phase, have everybody head back to their sections and melee the deception to restart the cycle. From here, you will repeat the mechanics of the encounter until the deception is killed. Just be aware that if you do not kill the deception in three phases, the wipe mechanic will be activated and most likely result in you dying. However, once killed, you can retrieve your loot and move on to the second phase. For phase 2 your loadouts should ideally stay the same, however for your super loadouts the only change is the titans who can now use the sentinel bubble. It's completely optional but it may help out later on and I'll show you why soon. So for phase 2 the arena will be completely opened up. This is the point in the raid where the game puts your knowledge to the test. Everything you have learned up until this point will be thrown at you in one big chaotic encounter. You will have crystals, vessels, buffs, the deception, and a lot of adds. Once again, assign three teams of two consisting of one buffed player and one non-buffed player. Have the non-buffed players wait in their designated section and have the buffed players stand on the rally flag. When the encounter starts, a few things will happen. Firstly, the green circle will spawn on the flag, buffing three players. The buffed players will all go to their designated sections and begin killing adds just as they did in the first phase. Shortly after the encounter starts you will hear a sound cue indicating that a crystal has spawned somewhere in the room. It will either be in dogs, void or stairs. When it spawns have the players from that side take it out fast. It will also be surrounded by that shield bubble meaning you will need to go inside of it to hit the crystal. Once again make sure these crystals are destroyed fast or they will wipe you. And also don't forget that the crystal needs to be hit by a buffed and non-buffed player at the same time. This should always be a priority no matter what. Also if the crystal starts on stairs it will next appear at void and then on dogs doing a clockwise rotation. Always communicate with the entire team where the crystal is and where it is going to next. Now once the buffed player's timer starts to get low they will need to switch so have the pair of two head to the vessel on the clockwise wall and swap out their buffs. You'll be doing this a lot throughout the encounter so get used to it now. Also remember that it moves clockwise so stairs 
bears will always use the vessel closest to the dog section to swap, and dogs will always use the vessel on the void side, and so on. Also, if at any point both players on your section have no buff, one of them will have to go and stand next to the vessel and call out for a buff. At this point, any other player in the group who is buffed should shoot the vessel at the same time as you in order to buff you. The player buffing you, however, does not need to stand in the vessel, meaning they can hit it from afar. Always remember that. Now, after three waves of enemies, a few things will happen. Firstly, an ogre will spawn in two of the three sections, and the section that does not spawn an ogre will instead spawn Garan's deception from the previous phase. You and your teammate will need to lure him underneath the big Garan and have one buffed and one non-buffed player melee him at the exact same time. If done correctly, he will become stunned for a few seconds and stand still. Just be aware that he will hit you and can almost certainly kill you if not careful. This is where it can be useful to have the Titan bubble, but it's definitely not needed one bit for this part. Now pay attention to Garan's hand. After he does his fireball attack, his hand will turn green. From here, shoot the hand until he slams down his axe, killing the deception. If the deception moves out of the way, you will need to lure him back there and try again. Also remember that after stunning him, your side will be left without a buff, so have one of you head over to your vessel and receive a buff from someone in your group. Once all three teams have killed their deception, the damage phase will start. All three Garans will begin charging up their heads using their hands. If they are not stopped, your team will wipe, so have every team shoot at the hands in order to draw them down. I'd highly recommend assigning each player to the left or right hand on their side. Now once the hands are down, shoot at the glowing spot on Garan's head. Once you have done enough damage, one of two things should happen. Either Garan will disappear or he will stay where he is. If Garan disappears from your side, it means that you shot the decoy, and if he sticks around, that means he is the real Garan. Also, I should note that before starting the damage phase, one final crystal should spawn, so quickly take it down before continuing. After all copies of Garan have been destroyed, have everyone group up at the vessel closest to the real one and swap out their buffs one final time. The Witch's Blessing will kill you if it runs out just as it would have previously in the raid, so make sure this is prioritized. From here, I would recommend grouping up in front of Garan and dropping down the Well of Radiance. You can now begin your damage phase. Remember that any time Garan begins charging his head, your team will need to take out his hands fast. Once done, begin damaging his head. Once it goes immune, go back to hitting his hands again, and so on. And if you have Tractor Cannon, it's a good idea to hit him with it throughout the fight. Also, if possible, have the Warlocks melee the Thrall around you to give your team the empowering buff for extra DPS. You should have around three runs of hitting him in the head before the fight restarts. By now, your Witch's Blessing should be running super low, so quickly get back with your partner and swap out your buffs. From here, the fight will restart, and you guessed it, you'll repeat the mechanics of the encounter until Garan is killed. However, once you finally kill Garan, you can give yourself a pat on the back, because you, my friend, have just beaten the Crown of Sorrow Raid in Destiny 2. Thank you guys for watching. This is actually quite a bittersweet video for me because as most of you already know, this will be my final video on Destiny 2. With Borderlands 3 releasing in September, I'll be missing Shadowkeep and that means I won't be making any more guides on the game. But I just wanted to say thank you to you guys for all of the support you have shown me. It's truly been heartwarming. I've seen my channel grow substantially and even been recognized in numerous raids, so thank you all so much. However, I don't want to take all of the credit. My guides take a lot of work to get out and I can't do it alone. Before I record everything, I always have my good friend MVP reading over the scripts and making sure everything is as no nonsense as possible. So please, before you thank me in the comments section, thank MVP too, because without him, the quality of my videos would be nowhere near as good as they are. It has been an absolute honor making guides for you guardians. Enjoy Shadowkeep and most important, of all. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.